put outside her window when the uh, Bnei Yisrael will come to attack Jericho. And uh, she says, please give me the sign so that you shall give life to my father and my mother. Rav Nachman is suggesting that the essential of the Zora of, of, of the people of Canaan was Tivus Mammon. And now Rochov is getting out of that because he's asking for a sign of life. And uh, she says to them, Unasatem li ois emes, give me a sign of truth. Because truth is life. Truth is life. And they said to her, the two spies said to her, well, you must bind the tikvas chu tashoni. You must bind literally the, the hope of the thread of scarlet to your window. So what is the hope here is the hope that is given to us by Emunah. Emunah gives us hope that even though things are dark now, in the end things will be good. And uh, Emunah is the very last, the very end of days. Emunah corresponds to the sphere of Malchus, which is the last of all the spheres. And so uh, when they were telling her to give this hopeful thread of scarlet, they were giving her Emunah. And they were giving her the attribute upon which everything else stands. As the rabbi said, that when the prophet Habakkuk came to reduce the whole of the Torah to one principle, that principle was the principle of Emunah. Now the thread, the thread of scarlet, was the concept of the shining of the light of the face. Thus we find that uh, when, uh, when uh, Tamar in Genesis had the twins, so when Zerach put out his, his hand and the midwife uh, tied a thread to his hand, so uh, she called his name Zerach, so she was tying this uh, thread to his hand. This was rep- representing the shining of the light of the face. Because it says in Isaiah that even when darkness will cover the earth, Hashem will shine. So the darkness in the earth, which is the darkness that all of the prophets prophesied for the end of days, this darkness is the concept of the depression, the anxiety, the worry that is bound up with this passion for money and livelihood which is uh, twice the pain of the woman giving birth. This is the dark face, the idolatry. But the Prophet says that uh, even when the darkness will cover the earth, the olayich Yitzrach Hashem, upon you, Israel, with your emunah, upon you, Hashem will shine. This will be the emunah in God, the emunah that is uh, helping us to receive the light of God's face. This is the emunah, that uh, was uh, when Yaakov came to Shechem and he graced the face of the city. This is the repair of money, the repair of the currency, the repair of the desire for, uh, for the lust for wealth. This is the whole concept of Zavulan going out with a munna to make Parnassah with Simcha. Yismach uh, Zavulan, Zavulan will rejoice when you go out. Now we find in Gemara Brachis that the Gemara brings the famous apparent contradiction in the words of Shlomo HaMelech, Emotza or Moitze. In one place, uh, he says that I find uh, a woman more bitter than death. And in the other place, he says that uh, he praises uh, uh, the, uh, the woman. And the woman is a symbol of Parnassa, a the, the Chazal said that if somebody encroaches on his friend's parnasa, it's as if that encroacher had relations with the wife of the suffering party. So this is an allusion to the fact that uh, when Shlomo speaks about uh, he finds the woman more bitter than death, or he finds uh, uh, the woman to be so great, there is an allusion to the concept parnasa. And uh, when parnasa is in a state of anxiety and pain because of the lack of emunah, that's when Shlomo, to, Shlomo, well, that's what Shlomo means when he says, I find the woman more bitter than death. This is the bitterness of the world that needs to be sweetened by the salt of the tzaddik. And the, uh, on the other side, uh, Shlomo says in Proverbs, Moto Isha, Moto Tov, when you find a wife, you found goodness. Well, this is referring on the level of allusion to holy parnasa. 
which is quite the opposite, because Mata Isha Mata Tov, when a person finds his wife, namely his good Parnasa, that he's found goodness, the Tov, the real goodness, is the Tzavik. This person has found the, the remedy in the Tzavik, who is the concept of the covenant of salt that comes to sweeten the bitterness of the, the, uh, the lust for ever greater wealth, the, the constant uh, anguish racing after livelihood. So Parnasa, which is the concept of Zavulun going out with joy, uh, this is the con- holy Parnasa is the concept of Shlomo HaMalach saying when a person finds a, a wife, he's found goodness. And the goodness is the Tzadik, which is the concept of the uh, keeping of the covenant, So after this discussion, Rabbi Nachman now turns to one of the great guardians of the wealth of the Yehudiah, and that is the mezuzah. The mezuzah, the Midrash asks, well, uh, uh, in Hebrew, why is money called uh, zuzim? You know, Chad Gadya, the Zabin Abba, Sarei Zuzim, father bought the little kid for two zuz. Why are little coins in Hebrew called uh, zuz? Uh, the reason is because they move from one to the other. Money is constantly going from one to the other. It's the, uh, the, uh, the means of purchase, the means of exchange in society. And this alluded to in the name of the mezuzah. The mezuzah is bound up with wealth. We put the mezuzah on the single most important part of all of our wealth, which is the home that we live in. We put it in the, uh, the place of shelter on the uh, entrance of the home, on the gates of the home, and uh, the very name of mezuzah is bound up with, with uh, zuzim, with, uh, with, with money, with, with, uh, with the rectification of property. Well now, on the mezuzah is written on the outside of the scroll the name uh, Shakai, Shin Dalit Yud. It is uh, Minhag Yisrael to do this. And there is a verse in Eoiv where we are promised that if we will serve Hashem with faith, Shaddai and Shaddai, the eternal God, will be your fortress. So the reason why the name Shaddai is written on the mezuzah is because through the mezuzah, the, uh, the, uh, the name of God is your fortress. You're putting your real <laughs> fortress not in the walls of your house, but in HaKadosh Baruch who is protecting the walls of your house. And the verse continues in Job where he's saying, if you'll be good, Hashem will be your fortress. The chesef te'ofois loch. The money will come flying to you. The silver will come flying to you. You'll be really successful and prosperous if only you will serve Hashem. And uh, in other words, through the bringing of God's name into the house in the Shaddai of the Mezuzah, the Parnasa, the livelihood, will come flying. Because the name, the holy name of Shaddai is itself an allusion to the Bris. Out of all of these spheres, the, na- the name of Shakai is bound up with the sphere of Yesod, which is bound up with the concept of the bris, and uh, therefore when HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to Yaakov Avinu uh, to be fruitful and multiply, he said, Ani keel shakai perei uruvei. I am shakai, uh, and therefore you should be fruitful and multiply, indicating that shakai is the concept of the bris, the concept of the covenant. And the Chachamim darshaned in uh, Gemara Yerushalmi that the Ten Commandments, which we read last Shabbos, each one of them is, uh, is, is contained in the Kriya Shema. Even though the Shema does not uh, outwardly appear to reflect the Ten Commandments, you can see throughout Kriya Shema, each of the Ten Commandments has its corresponding section in the Kriya Shema. And out of those uh, Ten Commandments, the section of Shema which is bound up with the Tenth Commandment, that you shall not uh, fancy and uh, desire the property of your friend, the Chazal said that this corresponds to the mitzvah of mezuzah in the Kriya And the reason is that when the person has a, a, a valid kosher mezuzah, when they're bringing shakai into the home through the mezuzah, 
Therefore, the person is uh, rectified the 